Hey everyone, I'm your average guide Sahil Gogna. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to discuss MSc in Public Health offered at McGill University. So without any delay, let's get started. Hi Purva, first of all, thanks a lot for joining. Oh, no problem. So can you please introduce yourself to the audience? Sure. So my name is Apurva and I'm a dentist from India. Uh, I came to Canada to study Masters in Public Health and uh, I studied it from McGill University. Mm -hmm. I graduated this summer and now I'm working full time in Montreal itself. And one thing Apurva about medical professions is that we, we listen a lot that there's a lot of scope here in Canada. Mm -hmm. So is it really true? So would you suggest people to pursue the medicine here? It depends on what course and what uh, career path that you're choosing. Okay. If you want to practice as a, as a licensed doctor, mm -hmm. dentist, nurse, physiotherapist, the okay. process can be a bit complicated and you have to pass your licensing exams okay. to actually practice over here. Uh, but if you want to go for other courses such as health administration mm -hmm. or public health, um, then it's a much easier uh, route. Okay. There are a lot of jobs yes. and Canada is one of the best countries for this kind of um, health sciences courses. Okay, and if you talk specifically about your program, can you please tell us like what exactly is the program and what's this all about? Yes, so uh, my course was Master of Science in Public Health. Mm -hmm. um, in this course, in, the, in our very first year, we were taught epidemiology, biostatistics and public health. So epidemiology is basically dealing with the incidence, the distribution of a particular disease and ways to control it. Okay. Um, public health is more of a practical approach to it mm -hmm. and uh, biostatistics is, is statistics in a healthcare setting, okay. basically. Yeah. So this was the focus in our very first year. The first term was very um, basic and introductory, mm -hmm. while our second term was more in-depth, more advanced okay. and uh, yeah, quite complicated. <laughs> uh, but the, our second year was completely electives. Okay. Um, so we got to choose whatever we are interested in. So there were some people who are interested more in the epidemiological aspects of it. But then there are some people who are more interested in the statistical aspects of it. I was okay. more interested in the public health aspect of it mm -hmm. so all of my courses were related to practical applications of this in the field um, and I took courses such as practic uh, practice of global health um, environmental health mm -hmm. and global health um, healthcare settings in comparative perspectives you know stuff like that okay yeah. and and you just told us that you come from a dentistry background that's right and were there any specific requirements for, for this program because uh, a lot of students might have the question about like what exactly they need to have as a bachelor's degree in India or right. maybe what, are, what were the requirements for this program? So there weren't many requirements for this program. What they needed was uh, a good IL score, okay. a good GRE score. Mm -hmm. uh, but I must say GRE score is something that McGill University requires. Other universities that teach the same course do not require GRE score. Okay. They require instead a statistical cert a, a, a statistical course certificate or, or some evidence or proof of it in your previous okay. education. So um, they require you to, if, if it's not supposed, I was a dentist, so statistics was obviously something that was not covered during okay. my course. So I would have had to take on a separate course online or in person, complete mm -hmm. the course, provide proof of that course. Oh, okay. But I gave GRE instead and okay. so I could apply to McGill University because they all they needed was were GRE scores. Oh, okay. So IELTS GRE scores, your CV should be strong with um, with a good good transcript, uh, okay. good scores, and um, your references would should be strong too. Okay. And uh, and yeah, if if you have any um, background in research, mm -hmm. that is definitely a bonus point. But do we have any particular requirement in terms of the education, like any education specific? No, education no, no. Background? In fact, in fact, our cohort, like our our batch of students, were was so diverse. There mm -hmm. were nurses, there were doctors, there were uh, dentists, there were um, people who had done microbiology, there was also someone who did economics in oh. and came. So it is, public health is not restricted to those who have a health background. Okay. It, it is definitely a bonus because it helps you understand public health better okay. and it helps you understand diseases better but, mm -hmm. uh, but it's totally fine if it's not. Okay. Yeah. And what the, what, what's about the job opportunities after this program? Are there enough jobs? There are a lot of jobs, in fact, especially in countries like Canada, in Europe, in USA, Australia. Okay. Uh, these are the countries where public health is more advanced and there are more jobs. Um, so the kind of jobs that you would usually get would be 
research oriented uh, but also there would be uh, knowledge translation, impact evaluation, outbreak investigation, um, biostatistics, more focused as biostatistics as an epidemiologist, okay. quite a lot of job <laughs> opportunities. In fact, this field is so diverse, you can you can divert, you can go into any direction that you want depending on what you're interested in. Mm -hmm. So right now, currently, I am interested more into uh, public health implementation kind of work. Okay. So that's uh, that's something sort of what I'm doing. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, you can also yeah, you can also go into uh, health policy. Health policy is also a very important um, aspect of this. Oh, okay. Yes. And Apoorva, if we talk about your current job, mm -hmm. so what exactly is your current job title and what are the what are your roles and responsibilities? Okay, so I currently work as a project manager mm -hmm. uh, for for my supervisor, and we work at the Research Institute of McGill University Health Center. Uh, this is affiliated to the hospital. Okay. And um, my current title is a, as a project manager mm -hmm. and I am handling the project which is for COVID-19 self-testing in South Africa. I, I was supposed to go to South Africa in a couple of months but now because of the new, new variant <laughs> and Canada has banned all travel, I don't know if and when I'll get to go. Okay. Uh, but the project definitely will happen and um, the results of, the, of this project will help um, guide policy in South Africa mm -hmm. and in a lot of low and middle income, other, other low and middle income countries. And other than that, I do other research work in um, diagnostic technologies for uh, screening of um, sexually transmitted infections like HIV, HCV, HIV is HIV AIDS, HCV is hepatitis C, um, and for CTGC, which is chlamydia and gonorrhea. And since you pursued your education from Montreal, and there's one thing that students are particularly concerned is about the language. Okay. So, were there any challenges that you faced due to French, even in your education or like while getting a job? So, during education, because um, because McGill University is bilingual, mm -hmm. and the students were a mix of international and Canadian students, there was no. Uh, it, it wasn't very difficult for me and the, the courses were taught in English so that was also not a problem. The okay. course material was also in English so none of that was an issue at all. Uh, the issue would, would probably be in finding jobs within Quebec. If you want to okay. find a job within Quebec, especially a government job, it would sort of require you to um, no French. A lot of job uh, opportunities that came my way mm -hmm. had the requirement that you need to be you need bilingual. To French, yeah. Yes, you need to be bilingual. So, um, thankfully, currently the job that I have is doesn't require me to be bilingual. Mm -hmm. I can. It's just spoken English is enough. Okay. Um, spoken and written English, of course, <laughs> is enough. Um, but French is not a requirement. So okay. that's good. So yeah. if you know French, then you are at a great advantage. But if you don't know French, then still there are chances that you can find a there good job. There are right? lesser chances, but but you can find chances. Um, okay. And we are talking specifically about Quebec, right? Outside Quebec, oh, you yes. can easily find a job. Yes, yes. A lot of people I know have just left Quebec, gone outside. They are working in Toronto, Ottawa, mm -hmm. Vancouver and in other cities. Okay. Yes. And if we talk about the salary of these medical professions, are they paid well? Uh, so they start at around 40k uh, per year kind of um, average, yeah. That would be the average. And uh, I know some people who are getting 60, 65k in their first job, so oh, okay. yes, so it's it's pretty good. And if you talk about Med, uh, McGill University in general, so mm -hmm. how is it for them, uh, medical students? Uh, McGill University, in fact, for medical for medicine for health sciences, mm -hmm. is one of the best in Canada, which oh. is why I chose to be a part of the university. Um, their focus on health sciences is is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also ranked uh, in. The public health program, in fact, is ranked third. Mm -hmm. um, it's recognized worldwide, and just being in this program, just being at this university, can give a great boost in your career. Oh, okay. Yeah. And before we end our conversation, any final advice to the medicine students, like how they should build a profile, how they can apply to the top universities. Okay. So, what are the things that they need to keep in mind? Any final advice to them? So, first of all, you need to decide on what career path you want to follow. Is public health what you want to do or is health administration something you want to do, is public health policy something you want to do or if, if you just want to be a licensed practitioner here and public health is just a route to you know get into it, something to build your CV on. Uh, once you decide that, you need to build your CV according to that. Uh, you need to decide what universities you want to focus on because 
there are a lot of universities giving this course, uh, offering this course and are well known for it. Uh, you need to go onto their website, see the course requirements and see what all, what all they require. It is completely okay to email these universities and ask them uh, any doubts you have because they are very responsive, they reply, they give you very good information. And uh, once you have this information, you can start your application process. Meanwhile, I would suggest do some research, build on your CV, do some extra courses online. Um, that really helps your publications, number of publications that you have really, really increases your chances to get into universities here. Uh, the universities are very competitive. It's very difficult to get in, but, but if you have the right kind of CV, you will get in. Don't worry about it. So guys, this was a twist video about MSc in Public Health offered at McGill University. I hope you have really liked the video and please make sure to subscribe the channel. And let me know in the comment section below which other universities would you like me to explore for the medical programs. See you in the next video. Till then, stay safe.